The new CISSP CAT exam. Anybody else's stress levels go through the roof when they heard about that? Yeah, it, me too. The announcement was just really sudden. I know there were some rumors about it, but they seem f far away in time. Like, I thought that I'd expect to see a CAT style exam when the new revised CBK uh, gets released in April 2018. Uh, that's when the ISC Square would implement the CAT style test. Not, not this early, but I don't know. It was a bit jarring. But I wouldn't worry about it too much either. Just keep studying the way you've been. It's the same pool of questions from what I hear, uh, but the scoring is just calculated in a different way, just a little bit more precise. The material though, which most importantly, the concepts, the material, the books, the questions you've already been doing, those have not changed. So just keep doing that. And if your exam is on December, I don't know, 19th, the day after when the CAT exam, or December 18th, then it's just, you'll just have to read I hope this video makes you feel better about what the CAT exam is like. But as far as your concepts and what you're studying, still the same. The new computer adaptive testing exam format will begin December 18th, 2017, and the ISC squared is going to expire the old fashioned 250 question, six hour linear exam. So if you're taking the new exam, you'll be like a new breed of CISSP, not the old generation who had to sit through 250 questions and and you know six hours but for me the the old exam was really actually 500 questions because after going through 250 questions i wanted to leave plenty of time to review every single question again not just the mark ones but every single question i mean i studied for the exam for a year straight and didn't just want to rush through a uh, rush through providing my choices and this technique um revising questions is going to be even more important for the new CAT exam because you can't go back to the previous questions. Once you a answer a question, that's your only chance. There's no going back. Try to answer the first few questions, especially that very first question, correct, as that's going to determine how the, determine the outcome of the rest of your exam. In computer adaptive tests, each question you answer determines what question you'll be presented with next. Once you answer a question, say the first one, that's it. The software's algorithms, the mathematics, the artificial intelligence, it goes into full motion to bring you the next question. So take your time, read the question at least three times, try to eliminate at least two of the choices, and then apply the concept of confidentiality, integrity, availability and try to think to fix the problem altogether instead of just applying a temporary fix. That's called thinking like a manager, which is what the exam is about. So take your time with each, que each question because you, you won't be allowed to go back. Important, that's important consideration. So yeah, you'll be a CSP who took the new CAT exam st uh, style exam and you can tell people like me who took the old exam that uh, I suck or I don't know anything about security or something or, or you know, we can just wind up being friends. Just some quick facts about the new CSP CAT exam I have right here. Uh, I'm sure you've read this a hundred times on the internet, but I feel uh, compelled to say you will have three hours uh, to complete the exam, exactly three hours, uh, unlike the old exam, which had six hours. You can get anywhere between 100 and 150 questions, depending on how many you get right or how many you get wrong. The old exam had 250 straight questions. So there's a lot less questions on this new exam, but the catch is that there's a ton more pressure than there already is to get every single question correct. There's just barely enough room for a few mistakes. Some good news is that the 25 sample questions are still there, which means you can get 25 questions incorrect and still pass the exam. Granted, you get the other questions correct as well. The, um, the sample questions won't count against, against you, so even if you get it right, it doesn't matter. You can probably get a few more answers wrong, plus the sample question, and still pass, but I wouldn't really count on that kind of comfort. Strive to get every single question correct, especially now in an adaptive type test. You still have to get a score of 700 or more, anything less is a fail. The exam is also supposed to provide more precision when it comes to gauging your ability to comprehend the knowledge, the CISP uh, material. All it really means is that you're not sitting there wasting time taking completely simple questions that are too easy for you and go straight to the tough questions which are more of a challenge. I think I read somewhere that, yeah, I don't know, I forget it. I can't confirm that. So again, try to take your time with each question. It's the best thing you can do for yourself for this new exam. It's more important to get every single question right instead of guessing because you know you think you're gonna run out of time or something like that. It so take your time, answer the question, 
and uh, don't worry about running out of time, especially at the beginning. Later on, when you get a good feel for the exam, then you can try and rush if you want to. Uh, all this shortening of the time, three hours, and, and adaptive testing, this also conveniently allows the ISC Square to allow more students to take the CISP exam as the testing centers will have more time slots to fill. So instead of just one person being able to take a six-hour test in one day, now two people can take a three-hour test. So more, more people can take the exam and, and become certified or, or not. Okay, that's enough of me talking about stuff you've probably read on the internet a hundred times. Here is a quick demo of how I think the scoring system will work on the CAT exam. Let's say on the y-axis there are five levels of difficulty. Hard, medium hard, medium, medium easy, and easy. And on the x-axis we have the number of questions starting with questions one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, and probably a lot more than just eight. When you first start the exam, the very first question you get is probably going to be a really important one. It could very well determine the direction and trajectory of your entire exam. The very first question could be somewhere between medium and medium easy, say right here. Let me just draw it on the screen. I'm going to choose the color yellow because I'm drinking a Corona. There you go, yellow. Now, the very first question, it's really important that you get this correct. I mean, it should really be your goal to get the first 20 questions 100% correct, as this is going to increase the exam's understanding of your abilities. Oh, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a blurry or hazy graphic. As I explain what happens when you get questions right or wrong, watch that blurry rectangle to see how it eventually becomes clear with the word ability. See, see that blurry rectangle right there? This is a measurement of how sure the computer is that you're either going to pass or fail. Not just pass and not just fail, but simply a calculation of your ability. Either your ability to pass the exam or your ability to fail the exam. Once the word ability goes from really blurred out to absolutely crystal clear, that's when the exam will most likely end. And this can happen after a few questions where the exam determines that You've answered a lot of right questions, the tough, hard questions uh, correctly. You're gonna, you're, you're, you're a good chance to pass the exam. Or it says you've missed a lot of medium questions and medium easy and easy questions. Then it's gonna realize that you're gonna fail the exam. Back to that first question. It's really important to get this right because when you right here, first question. Because when you do, you go higher up a level in difficulty, not only in the exam but also within the software's calculations. So let's say you get you take the first question and you get it right. Bam. Then you go to question number two. And if you got it right, you get a medium difficulty question. If you get it wrong, for question number two, you get a medium easy difficulty question. You're better up the more you get right, the better your chances of passing the exam. It, uh, obviously. I just realized what I just said. Obviously, if you get the questions right, you'll be better off, but I'm just explaining the reasoning behind that for this CAT exam. In the old exam, you might have had the comfort of knowing that if you get a few questions wrong here and there, it isn't a significant impact on your score. With the CAT exam, there is. So say you get the first question right. So you level up to question number two, which is a medium difficulty question. And if you get question number two right, let's say you go up to another level in question three, right here, between medium hard and medium. Actually, let me just, let's, let's clear out where the pass marker would be. Say you pass around right here. My handwriting with a mouse is even worse than with a pencil. Just FYI. Pass marking here. The more questions you get right on question number four, question number five, and imagine this is question number uh, 63, 79, or 82. The more you start getting right, the more your computer's ability uh, to calculate how you're going to do and eventually pass the exam easily. So watch that blurry rectangle as I went upwards, right? It became blurry to crystal clear, which means the, the, the computer has calculated your ability of whether you're going to pass or fail. And if you got a bunch of questions right and you're getting a lot of difficult questions, then the ability has become clear that you're going to pass this exam. That's your trajectory. You're on your way to pass according to the computer's calculations. Now if you go back, um, oops, sorry about that. Let's just draw this in here. Pass, yellow, because of corona. Say you got the first question, you got it wrong. Got question number two, you get a medium easy question. You get that wrong. And now you're at question three. You're so far away from your past now. It's so far away. Whereas if you start getting the right questions, you're just a little bit closer. The path is just a little bit closer. Um, so let's keep going with you getting questions wrong. You get questions wrong. You get question number four wrong. Five, six. You got, let's say you get question seven right. 
so you go up a little bit but then you got question eight wrong again and now it's such a hard climb to the past so hard so hard and by this time you've taken maybe 60 70 80 90 questions and you're you're you you had a bad start but now you're ending it really strong and just as you're about to hit that pass marker the ability marker becomes clear that your ability right now isn't quite there and the exam stops and prevents you from passing because you got a lot of questions wrong and the climb back is tough that climb back is tough okay let's say that if you passed say you got a lot of questions right let's just play out the whole thing uh, question number one you got right question number two you got right question number three you got wrong at four question number five correct six correct seven or six incorrect seven correct and now you're at the pass level and by seven I mean this could be again 78 80 88 or so forth and your ability level becomes more and more clear as you answer more questions and since you kept a pretty good pace an upward climb it looks like a stock market ticker it looks like a, a upward climb you go all the way up and then you eventually would pass if you had a weak start if you started right here and then went here but still got a lot of questions right as you eventually took more questions but then you dropped a little bit right here you took a question right but you dropped and then you dropped again and got another question wrong then that climb right back up there you could eventually make it maybe just to the tip there but by that time you've already taken 120 130 questions and or the max number of questions and the computer stops you right there and says no nope, you don't have it quite yet you gotta come back and take the exam again which sucks but I guess that's how they're how they're doing this should we do that one more time? Let's do it just one more time. I'll make it really quick. Question one, you get right, go up a level. Question three, you get it right, up a level. Your ability marker is now becoming a little bit more clear than it was before for the computer. Remember, it's your ability to either pass or fail. Right now, it probably looks like you're going to pass. Up one more. Get more questions right. Ah, uh, you kind of missed one. That's all right. You got more correct, and you hit the pass. Pretty quick. You know, there's shortest distance to A to B is a short as uh, a straight path right but this is as straight as you're gonna get if with a few mistakes your trajectory your ability is now crystal clear that you will pass say you get the questions wrong question two you get wrong wrong you didn't study your software development domain you didn't study your IPsec you didn't study your mobile device security your BCP your DRP your SDLC your risk management your threat, threat vulnerability uh, what other terms can I throw out uh, known plain text cipher block chaining Incident response, TKIP, MAC filter, all that stuff. Conducting a site survey, securing a society, all this stuff that was in your Cybex books. You didn't quite, you didn't quite read fully, and you know you're you're suffering now. You're not getting those questions. But that's how it's going to score. If you didn't quite study that hard, it's going to go right here. If you studied, dedicated, hard work, five hours a day, eight hours on weekends, um, you know, that's going to be your trajectory. You don't you kind of don't want this you want to start off strong you want to start off strong and then end strong if you start off in the middle you kind of get questions right and wrong right and wrong right and wrong that climb back is really tough the climb back is gonna be you have to dig yourself out of a hole basically and if you get a question wrong it's like you have to get two questions right for every question you got wrong okay that's how I think the new CISP CAT exam is gonna go as far as how you take it and how you score the number one strategy I can tell you guys, I mean, you can read a lot of tips and strategies that they send out there. The best way to do this, the best way to handle the question. I'll tell you the only tip you're going to need to know, and that's to get every single question right, and that's it. No compromises. And the only way to do that is just study really hard, read your book, read the Sean Harris at least three times cover to cover. No, wait, that's not it. Read the Cybex cover to cover at least three times. Read the Sean Harris cover to cover at least once. Just read. And in, the between, in between doing all that, take a lot of practice questions. If you're just starting out, just read as much as you can. If you have about two, three months left of your studies, 50% of your studies should be uh, your books and 50% should be taking practice questions. The more practice questions you take, the better you get at, at, at getting ready for this exam right here. Did I mention that you can't really go back a question either? So once you answer a question, just that's it. That's your, that's your only chance. So really take your time with that, um, you know, as I said before. Uh, read the question three times eliminate two choices think of confidentiality integrity availability uh, maybe even authorization identification uh, what's the other one accounting and uh, authentication um, put human safety first people first try to save the company money try not to temporarily fix the problem but to fix the problem completely 
Try to think like a manager. Try to think like a C-level executive. If your company just had a DDoS, the CEO does not care that you null routed the traffic and and you know kind of save the company money. He cares that why did this happen in the first place and why did our current mitigation strategies not work and allow this to happen. So you do a risk analysis all over again to make sure to calculate why this happened and to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's the thing with thinking like a manager. It's make sure it doesn't happen again. That's all managers want. Okay, we had a mistake, we had an incident, great. We fixed it, awesome. But let's not let this happen all over again. That's all the CISP is testing you on. Okay, my name is Luke Ahmed. I've been doing this CISP thing for about four years. I run a website called studynosintheory.com. Uh, like 80% of the site is free, 20% is uh, like paid membership. It's like 20 bucks a month. Uh, you get weekly updates, videos, practice questions, original scenario-based practice questions, custom videos you can't find anywhere on the web besides this website. Um, you get weekly updates, and I mean weekly. You get update from me every week if you're a member. Just keep you, I, I just annoy you and keep reminding you that you got an exam to study for, and you know you, you chose this. You chose this. You chose to take this exam. You chose this life, and you know let's let's get up and let's get it done. Okay. Thank you for your time in watching this video, and remember the number one tip is to get everything right. Thank you.